seconds and counting. What's up, guys? Clutch City Entertainment here, back with another video, and today we have some rumors and kind of an interesting situation to talk about here with the Houston Texans. You know, as the the draft is coming closer, more rumors are circling. I'm not only about the draft, but you know, front offices as a whole. And I heard something interesting today from Michael Lombardi, is a very uh, popular uh, kind of NFL analyst insider, if you will. I uh, said this on the GM Shuffle podcast. And he said, there's a longer game to be played in Houston. I think there'll be some organizational changes in Houston after the draft. I'm not saying people will be fired, but organizationally, things will be shifted. Um, this is also from John Crumpler, a good friend of mine on Twitter. Uh, he said that Lombardi referenced D'Amico Ryan's six-year contract and how his organization, um, kind of meaning the Texans have given D'Amico Ryan's the keys to the franchise, as were previously it was Nick Sarah running the entire show. Lombardi also pointed to the fact that this the biggest reason there may be no rush to draft a quarterback internally is because of that D'Amico Ryan's contract. So that's a lot to take in, but we're going to head it to Jacob here and, and see what he thinks about what this could possibly mean. Yeah, so I, I kind of just think I, I've seen the rumors about maybe Casario being gone. I don't think it's that extreme. I think it's more of a, I think it's more of a scout situation. I think D'Amico probably wants more of his scouts and the people that he trusts and he's worked with in San Francisco in the building, which you can't do till after the draft. Because at this point, the scouting is already basically done. I think it's more of almost getting away from the Patriots system that they've had for a long time. And I think it's more trans going towards the what the Niners have done for a while with D'Amico. Because I think D'Amico basically has all the power. If D'Amico wants a player in the draft, I think he's going to get the player that he wants. Because I think Casario is on the hot seat. I think they trust him, but I think... D'Amico is going to have the final say on whatever happens. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, something I'm I'm gonna reference back to is kind of when the Texans hired Nick Serio. He kept all the scouts that the Texans had for that draft. Um, and then, like you mentioned, well, maybe that he'll bring in a lot of 49ers guys. That's possible because I believe after that first draft that Nick Casario had. They did kind of start to add some Nick Casario's guys, some of the people he knew from New England. Overall, Nick Casario, he did keep a lot of scouts that were in Houston, but now it may be time to move on from you know some of those guys that were even there before Nick Casario was there, or maybe they'll move on from some of the guys that you know, were the New England guys that Casario brought and just kind of let D'Amico have the keys to the franchise. And that's I really like that, but something we're going to have to – think about and i'm gonna bring in a big 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 hypothetical here is what if the texans kind of clashing in the front office what if nick sarah and D'Amico ryan's are off to a really really bad start they're disagreeing on what they want to do at pick two maybe someone wants a quarterback someone wants will anderson and uh, maybe nick sarah wants to trade back or something you know kind of mind-boggling like that and and maybe he is moved down to a lower role so someone on twitter say well maybe He's moved down to like executive vice president and you bring in a guy like Adam Peters. Um, Adam Peters has been the 49ers assistant general manager for two seasons. That's someone, uh, his name's been thrown around there by people uh, that I know. And um, that's something that could be a possibility. But obviously, if you're firing your general manager right after the draft, that is very, very poor mismanagement in the and that is not something that you ever want to see from an organization, even though the Texans are pretty much having a clean slate here by giving D'Amico Ryan the keys to the franchise. It would still be a pretty mind-boggling and kind of wild thing to do to fire your general manager right after the draft, don't you think, Jacob? Yeah, it, it would be very bizarre. It feels like, although I, I, I like this area, but I don't think it would be completely unreasonable to move on and move to a new GM. It just seems like the timing is very bizarre. But also, the Texans have all, have done this before with the GM. Casserly, their very first GM, got fired after a draft that he drafted. He knew he was gone, and he drafted the draft, which was it's very bizarre. I don't know if that's ever happened before, but it's not like this is this would be the first time that they've done that. Yeah, I mean, Casserly, obviously one of the you know great you know front office guys in, in NFL history. 
definitely got to give him his credit there. But uh, this is probably a little a little different. But I mean, it's, yeah. I love that you brought that up because that's something very interesting. And um, you know, that's uh, that's always interesting to to look back into. And you know, I agree with what you said. Uh, you wouldn't you know really be too bothered by the fact of Nick Sarah would be fired. Timing completely awful, but. I could 100% see the Texans moving on from Nick Casario at one point because, you know, he's signed like the most free agents in the NFL for the past two or three years. And maybe that philosophy just needs to be switched. Maybe you need a GM that's going to make a trade for a superstar. Maybe you need a GM that's going to go out there and sign a big time player. Maybe we need a GM that's going to have pretty, you know, forward thinking and probably make the right move and just, Select a quarterback, you know. So, if the Texans take Will Anderson and if they get into quarterback hell, I think Nick Casario has got to be gone because if you were so if so stingy about drafting a quarterback, you know, over these years, I'm Will Anderson's gonna be a great player. But if you allow yourself to consistently be a seven to eight to nine win team, and then you see people like Bryce Young and CJ Stroud leading their team to the playoffs multiple times in their first three years winning 10 plus games and stuff like that he's 100 percent gone and um you know that's why you may need a general manager that's just simply going to be more aggressive and actually adds a genuinely talented player not a bunch of solid players but a talented player and that's just something uh for everyone to think about and that's gonna be it for today's video uh keep in mind a lot of this stuff is just rumors hypothetical base but you know, with everything happening leading up to the draft, I thought it'd be something interesting to talk about, interesting to think about. So if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us. Put it down below. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time. Peace.